the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Come, Holy Spirit, for the hearts of thy faithful, and enkindle in them the fire of thy love. Send forth, O Lord, thy Spirit, and they shall be created. And thou shalt renew the face of the earth. Let us pray. O God, who sent the Holy Spirit to enlighten the hearts of the faithful, grant that we, by the sending of the same Holy Spirit, may be ever truly wise and ever rejoice in his consolation. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Saints Marcellinus and Peter, Saint Peregrine, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Yesterday we spoke in general terms about the ground upon which is built that mystical body that allows us to suffer for one another. And that is our baptism. And it is in and through that incorporation into the mystical body of Christ by way of our baptism. And that identification, that identification with Christ and him crucified that we are able to share in the graces that he offers through his passion by uniting our own suffering for the sake of ourselves, for the sake of others, and indeed the entire world. Paul Bashar, we are but flesh, and so we get tired. We get tired. Even if we're not enduring tremendous suffering, it's easy to forget that we are aiming towards a heavenly goal, and we become fatigued. It's exhausting to offer one suffering constantly for the sake of others. The saints, magnificent in their lives, even stumble and fall with this on occasion. But is their perseverance in it that in the end makes them saints? And why is it that they are able to persevere? And why is it that we are able to persevere? One simple virtue that we are given in our baptism. And that is the theological virtue of hope. In the infusion rooms at cancer centers, wherever I happen to be. So I personally get to spend a lot of time with those who are suffering and afflicted with various forms of cancer. And there are generally two types of people that I meet, whether that's the cancer center here in Berkeley, the one in Salt Lake City, and now the one in Oregon. Two types of people. The hopeful and the sad. And that sadness is a form of despair. Why is it that I must suffer this? Why is it that I must endure this? Why? And with that despair comes anger. Why, God, have you afflicted me so? And this spreads. This anger spreads just like the cancer to family members and friends. And that anger in them, rises up and says, God, why my loved one? But then there are those filled with hope. And the one characteristic that I've noticed with those who have hope is humility. Humility. Specifically in the form of self-forgetfulness. They're not so worried about themselves. Instead of worrying about their illness, they're worried about everyone else. They're fatigued, exhausted, and they're worried about the person next to them. Moments from death, 
I'm still worried about the other people. Praying for them, suffering from them, enduring for them. Full hope. Not necessarily a hopefulness and a cure. Not hope that there won't be pain or suffering. Now, the hope of a Christian is different. The hope found in the martyrs who we celebrated today was not, was not that they would avoid suffering, but that they would do so well. That they would do right by the blood of the Lord. And so likewise ourselves in our own afflictions must pray ardently that we might have the strength by that divine grace that we have been given already. That virtue of hope that God infused in our soul when we were baptized. That he may inflame it and allow us to see past this veil of tears so that our vision may pierce the heights of heaven and see the goal, see the heavenly homeland that we are destined for so that we can see that everything that we do in this life, everything that we do is directed towards that purpose. To be with God for all eternity and to bring as many people with us as possible. But what enlivens this hope? It's not just magical. It doesn't just show up. It doesn't pop up. How do we exercise this or participate, rather, more perfectly in the theological virtue of hope, which is a share in the very life of the Blessed Trinity? Those theological virtues, that's the Blessed Trinity dwelling within us. And how do we participate it more perfectly? You are already doing it. You are already doing what must be done. And that is the practice of the virtue of religion joined with the virtue of charity. Pray. Offer petition. Reading sacred scripture. Meditating upon that word of God. Studying the sacred doctrine so that we may come to know more about who God is. Devotion. Like being here for a novena. Offering that sacrifice of time for the sake of the one who you love. Or for yourself. Because God loves you. And doing all of this because of our love for God. First and foremost, first and foremost, and finding our love for ourselves and in for those who suffer around us in and through our love of God. Because as we become his friends more perfectly, we start to love the things that he loves the way he loves them. And that is, in fact, charity. Offer right worship coming to the holy sacrifice of the Mass, having one's confession heard, participating in the sacramental life of the church to its fullness. As we do this, those theological virtues, and in particular, hope, become more present to our vision. And our reason for life, our reason for living, our reason for suffering, changes. Changes from something material to something immaterial. And that is the possession of God. The possession of God. He has already begun that process within us. And through purification and suffering and prayer, we can allow that process to transform us more perfectly. That we might be sanctified and not just merely justified. As we participate hope more perfectly, then we can dispel 
all of those terrible vices that come from despair. And not only are we filled with joy, the joy that comes from the life of the Trinity, the life of the Spirit, but we can share that joy with others and provide them with hope. One of our brothers who died from cancer not too long ago, Brother Raymond Rutheau, he, uh, like many Dominicans, was very eccentric in his own ways. And he didn't want to attend certain hours of prayer when I first met him. But he got cancer. And he started to suffer. And he didn't want to show it. He sort of endured. And he came to office. He came to prayer. And he was still struggling with these certain aspects of the, of the life of, of devotion. But then, as he recalled to me one day, he said, the Blessed Virgin Mary appeared to him. And she said, Raymond, go to Compline. Okay. Raymond, go to adoration. Okay, Mom. And so faithfully, Brother Raymond started attending all of these aspects of prayer and as the cancer literally started to eat at him, the pain and suffering that he endured, his devotion grew and grew, and his sanctity grew and grew. And every night he prayed prayers and adoration to the Blessed Virgin Mary to assist him in his time of need. And growing in that virtue of religion, joined with charity for love of God and for love of the brothers, he suffered well, and he died well. He conquered it in a spiritual way, a more important way, a lasting way. And he is a model, another model of how the life of grace can dispel the darkness. We must enter into that light, each and every one of us. Embrace it, embrace it with vigor with joy, and with hope. Let us offer our prayer to St. Jude. St. Jude, glorious apostle, faithful servant and friend of Jesus, the name of the traitor has caused you to be forgotten by many, but the church honors and invokes you universally as the patron of difficult and desperate cases. Pray for me, who am in need of God's mercy. Make use, I implore you, of that particular privilege accorded to you to bring visible and speedy help where help was almost despaired of. Come to my assistance in this great need that I may receive the consolation and help of heaven in all my necessities, tribulations, and sufferings, particularly. And all the elect throughout all eternity, I promise you, O blessed Jude, to be ever mindful of this great favor, I will honor you as my special and powerful patron and encourage devotion to you. St. Jude, pray for us and for all who honor and invoke thy aid. Amen.